Hello, I'm Adam and I know comics. Welcome to another episode of Imperious Arcs. We cover story arcs and other comic-related tidbits to better inform and nerdify the world. In the past few weeks, I've read nearly 100 issues of Wolverine. Some of the stuff I read when it came out, others were totally new to me and easily accessible thanks to the Marvel Limited app. I would like to share with you the first issue in the Brotherhood story arc from the 2003 Wolverine series written by Greg Rucka. First, look at how Derek Robertson draws the Canadian anti-hero. That definitely doesn't look like Hugh Jackman. That is one ugly dude. So the story opens on a rainy day at a crappy diner in an unknown location and is narrated through a letter to the mean man. The narrator asks the mean man if he's ever scared. We see Logan reading a book, drinking coffee in the crappy diner while the waitress at the diner gets picked up by some sleazeball with a mustache who later pays her to have sex with him. He throws the money at her while he leaves her apartment, and what we now assume is her narration, she says, the world is full of mean people with mean hearts who do mean things. As she steps into the hall to scream at him, we see a neighbor, who we can assume is Logan, notices the exchange and she screams at him too. The next day, she sees Logan, aka the mean man, at the diner, and as he leaves, he drops her a really huge tip. She begins to realize that he never asked her story, but that's because he didn't really have to. She realizes that although he is a very mean person, he seems like the only person who could care about her. During her narration, she claims that there are people to take her back to an unspecified place, but that wherever it is, it's so bad that they would have to kill her before she'd go back. As she narrates this, she opens the door to see Logan with a knife through his leg, walking through the hallway. He cracks a joke at her by repeating the phrase she said to him in the hall that day when the mustachioed man left her apartment. Hoping for an eyeful, then he says, just go to sleep, kid. The next time at the diner, things seem normal. Logan is fully healed from his wound, and that's when she knows this is the guy she needs. She finds an excuse to go to his apartment by returning a book he leaves at the diner. She asks if she can come in, and Logan simply says, I won't stop you. We see Logan sit in the barren room on the floor with an only a pillow, a six-pack, and a few books. She tells him her name is Lucy, and that she knows his name. She's made it up for him. It's the mean man. Logan says, this seems kind of judgmental. She comments on how much he reads and asks, I mean, all day you just read? I do other things. She probes him about getting stabbed, and she wonders who stabbed him. He asks, why does it even matter? She basically responds, it matters whether or not he was being mean to people or being mean to a not-so-mean guy. Logan changes the subject and asks her if she likes to read. She says she's more of a writer, but definitely wants to borrow a few of his books. As she leaves, she asks if he will look out for her. He simply says, sure. She goes back to her apartment, and she narrates how much it means and how it makes her feel safe that somebody's looking out for her. We see her hide something in a book and put it on a shelf. Two men, brothers, come up the stairs and shoot holes in Logan through his door, then move to Lucy's apartment. It all happens really fast. Logan drags his bloody self to her, but it's too late. Through all this, she's still narrating. She says her body will only be proof that she's just dead, nothing more. And that they'll just chalk it up to drugs or sex, that her death will barely go noticed and she'll be completely forgettable. He goes back to her room and finds a letter written to him that tells this story. On the final page of the comic, he's back at the diner reading her letter to him. She asks him through the letter, even if you do nothing more, please do this for me. My name is Lucy Braddock, don't forget me. This is a quietly intense story. Greg Rucka does an incredible job telling a story with little talking and hats off to Derek Robertson on penciling the gritty tale in a way that totally deserves. This issue feels like the beginning of an old Clint Eastwood Western or something. I mean, he is, for all practical purposes, a man with no name in this book. They don't actually name him at any point besides the mean man. The intensity is there without too much action required. The, the pace is slow, but the story still drives forward. This particular story arc unfolds into two different but somewhat related story arcs, Brotherhood and a separate one, Coyote. If you haven't already, please look up the first 11 issues of Greg Rucka's Wolverine. They are ideal Wolverine stories, and like any Clint Eastwood-style tale of revenge, you better believe blood will be spilled. Think Western, classic, hang em high type of vengeance. So what do you guys think? Do you like Wolverine stories filled with quiet intensity, or do you prefer one that's filled with action and gore? I personally am a fan of both, and I'm looking forward to reading even more Wolverine. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit us up on all sorts of social media. Facebook, Instagram, and definitely Twitter. Until next time, I will be reading even more Wolverine. <laughs>